welcome to another installment of Money You Should Ask. I'm your host, Bob Wheeler. In this episode, we're going to explore, question, examine, converse, dig deep, expose, laugh, and cry about the money beliefs, money blocks, and life challenges of our next guest. Turn up the volume, listen, learn, and laugh. I'm excited today because I have my good friend, Jenny Kwan. Hey, Bob. Thanks for having me today. How are you doing? I'm already laughing. (laughs) I don't know. know. So I got to give some of your credits here. So um, Jenny's first gig was Kids of the Century when she was 11 years old. That's right. And then she's been in California Dreams, which was a hit TV show, um, Avenue Q in the Vegas production. And the first national tour. And the first national tour. She had a record deal with Hollywood Records, owned by Disney. That's right. And um, she was also in Miss Saigon. Yes. As the star. Uh, tough, tough shoes to fill from uh, Leah Salonga. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. No pressure. No pressure at all. And then uh, Nickelodeon's Avatar, The Last... Airbender. Airbender. I That's knew it was right. a bender, but I just didn't know who bent. A bender, okay. bender, bender, yeah. That's good. It's so good to have you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this is exciting. Yeah. So... Just checking in. How are you doing today, financially, just right in this moment? Do you have a million dollars in your wallet? Wow. Getting right to it, Bob. (laughs) I would love to say I have a million dollars in the bank, and I do not. Oh, okay. Yeah. What's your comfort level of money in the bank? Hmm. You know, it's interesting that uh, I said yes to your podcast because I think (laughs) you you, you know a little bit about my financial background. Um, But – um, my comfort level probably is never, ever comfortable, even mm-hmm. though maybe looking on the outside, looking in, people would be like, what do you ever have to complain about? So my comfort level, uh, I'm still trying to reach that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Do you budget? Not as well as I should. Okay. <laughs> but you, yes, yes. What's, um, do you know what your average, you don't have to say it, but do uh-huh. you know how much you spend on average per month? Um, I probably spend a good, uh, including bills or just, yeah, just all the basics, all the basics. Yeah. Um, probably anywhere between 1500 and 2000. And the thing is, you know, I've been very lucky because the home that I live in was passed down from my parents. Yeah. You know, we paid for it, but yet it's grandfathered in as far as. Are now, did taxes. you? <laughs> so Oopsies. Let, let, oops, so and let, great too. And great. So let me ask you this: Did you pay emotionally? Like, did you? <laughs> like, was there a price to pay when your parents gave you the house? I mean, did they or sold you the house? Did you know, it's interesting. At the time, I don't believe so because my parents were just going to pass it down to me. I, as a kid, we would go to the house and do maintenance on it and I used to complain, just complain. Why do we have to come to this stupid house? I don't want to come here. And my parents would be like, this is going to be your house, Jennifer. I'm like, I don't want this stupid house. (laughs) You know, and then, you know, thank goodness they they were – They ignored you. They ignored me basically. Um, And at the time, no, because they literally didn't want to take money from me to, uh, you know, acquire it from them. But I just felt it was right for me to do that. Now I guess I do feel – a, a, a bit of a – hopefully my mom won't listen to this. But but yeah, sure, emotional obligation, you know. I mean I I try to take care of, of my family as much as possible. Um, but I think that's more self-imposed as opposed to the actual obligation of okay. my mother putting it on me. Cool. Mm-hmm. Now, were your parents super excited that you wanted to be an – Actress? An actor? Well, what I learned is – so I just learned this probably a couple years ago. My mom told me, she said (laughs) – she said that she prayed to God. She said, dear God, please let my daughter be a nun or an actress. And I was thinking (laughs) there's no way in beep that I would ever become a nun. (laughs) Even when I was very Catholic, you know, I I consider myself a recovering Catholic, but no way was was I going to become a nun. And so she said, okay, no, no. When she was pregnant with me, she said, please make her an actress. So here I am. I've been acting since I was 11. And I like to say it's a blessing and a curse too. No. <laughs> the, the the forever doting artist, but yes. So. Well, it's it's funny because so I have a lot of Filipino Filipino friends, Filipino friends. Yeah. Um, yeah. And um, so they joke and say that um, 
the Philippines is made up of 500 years of Spain and mm-hmm. 50 years of Hollywood. And you, you know, so you get – Five or six, that. five or six Filipinos together, and you can do almost any musical. You can, <laughs> and everybody sings well, and probably plays an instrument. Yeah, so. and it's true. That's so interesting because when I was a kid starting out in the business, so my 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 uh, birth given name, my last name is Fernando. Oh, okay. Right, and so when I was eleven, and I basically was discovered on a plane coming home from New York back to LA by an agent. I mean, who does that ever happen to? Right, it happened to me. It was very crazy. But um, yeah, she opened a book, and she's like, "Okay, not this, not that. There's too many of, of Lees. There's di- Quan. There you go. There's your last name. You know." And people used to ask me all the time, "You know, are your parents offended by that?" But my parents just wanted me to have success. Cool. So, you know, especially my father, he, he, he didn't get offended by that. He just really was super supportive of, of wanting me to be successful at what I do. When did you feel – and maybe I'm assuming you do, but when did you first feel successful? Like when you, like when you did the kids tour, um, do you remember getting your first big check and thinking, oh my god, I just got paid to sing or to act or – you know, it's interesting. I <laughs> I still kind of pinch myself, you know. I, I it, For me, I, I don't know if I'm a modest person or not, but when I look back, people are like – they say, oh, my gosh, and you've done so many things. And I'm like, well, there's still so much I want to do. Right. But I would say uh, the first time I walked out on stage, um, I think it was one of the shows for Miss Saigon that I was living my dream. Yeah, it was it was pretty interesting that my biggest dream happened first when I was so young. Wow. One of one of one of the things that I really wanted to accomplish. So that was pretty cool. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Do you remember your first big paycheck? I do. Yeah. And that was when I got on the TV series and I was like, yeah, (laughs) I mean, I, I don't think I even said, yeah, but I thought, oh. Let me sock this away. Let me sock this away. So and did you? I was like a little squirrel. Yeah. yeah. I probably – I was the most unsexy kind of uncool, you know, kids on the block. Everybody was buying new cars. Everybody was, you know, moving into these great apartments. And I was like, I think I better save my money. I'll stay at home. I didn't buy a new car. I, I made sacrifices. Okay. And yeah, to me it was so boring. But I thought – no, I, I think that's the right thing to do. I mean, I was pretty responsible. Okay. Very, I Even, mean, I was responsible when I was young, and I'm responsible pretty much now. Now, when you were little, mm-hmm. um, so your mom prayed for you to be a nun or an actor. <laughs> um, but what did you pray for? Like, did you – like, what was your dream career? Was that – like, did you know early on that you wanted to be um, entertaining in front of the – You know, it's funny. I – I did not dream of being an actor very young because I was so super shy. I was so excruciating – what's the word? Excruciating – Excruciatingly. Even, excruciatingly shy uh-huh. um, that I didn't even think that was a possibility to be honest. Uh, what happened was when I was discovered on the plane, it literally was like a movie. I was sleeping and I remember having drool on my shoulder – sleeping it was i remember it my sister woke me up and she's like jennifer go meet this agent on the plane and i was like i don't want to and i walk up the aisle and i just see all the kids dancing and like acting crazy around this agent and she was just sitting there and and i walk up to her and she's like hey would you like to try acting and i said no (laughs) well if you come home would you come and meet me in my office i shrug my shoulders and She said, well, if you take a class and you like it, will you come meet me in my office? And I said, yes. So that's when I fell in love with acting. I loved singing already. It really helped me come out of my shell. But to tell you the truth, my dream, I think, was to become a veterinarian or a doctor. Mm -hmm. Although I hate seeing blood. Or I don't like – I don't want to see real body parts. So it's probably a good thing that I – well, I like real body parts, yeah. but yeah. not, you know, the yeah. inside of them. Just not with blood on them. Not with blood yeah. and yeah. veins and all that kind well, of stuff. Well, that's cool. Did, so the veterinarian was because you like animals? I love animals, yes. Yeah. Yes. So I always wanted to have a pet store so that I could always have new pets yeah. <laughs> in case I got tired of one. <laughs> right. But then I didn't want to become a veterinarian because I didn't want to lose any animals yeah. at the same time. Yeah. So kind of that's, dual, you know. Yeah. 
Love, hate. Love, hate. Or love, sadness. Yes. Something exactly. like that. Exactly. Um, let me ask you. All right. I'm going to completely ask a random question. Yeah. Um, I'm what, ready. What would you consider your three biggest financial mistakes? My three biggest financial mistakes would be holding on too tight. Mm-hmm. Um, fear of losing my my savings, which to be quite honest, okay, here's some truth telling. Huh. I probably have the same amount of money I started saving with. Okay. <laughs> because I'm so – uh, wound tightly around mm-hmm. money that it's again here I am on your show talking about money which is one of my my loves and hates um, and let's see number three I think it's just uh, um, not allowing myself to be in the flow of what money has done for me not being in relationship in a more positive way Okay. So I have probably more – I don't want to say negativity, but I guess that's what you would call it, right? Yeah. Okay. Did Did you ever take any money out of your mom's purse or your dad's wallet when you were a kid? Uh, I don't remember. Maybe once or twice, but I probably asked or maybe I looked and got scared and then <laughs> Good knew Catholic. that it was wrong. Good Catholic <laughs> Filipino girl. Yeah. Yeah, not, I don't not, want to get lashings. Yeah. Right. Did you ever take any money out of the offering plate? <laughs> oh, hell to the no. Okay. Although, although if I did take money out of the offering plate, I would probably put it in the envelope that said for the poor because okay. I was thinking, how come these people are still poor if we keep giving money to them? <laughs> so I probably would put it in that envelope That's if funny. I stole from the offering plate, which I never did. Just so everybody knows. She was good. Oh, Praise God. Praise. Praise. Hallelujah. What is um, – you, are you aware of any current money blocks or beliefs that you have around money that are like I'll never have enough or is there a thing that comes up for you constantly when you're re- getting ready to buy something or spend or – Oh, hitting to the heart, Bob. Um, probably that – it's all right for everybody else, but for me, mm, hmm. you, you might not really get what you really, really want. Okay. Maybe it's not okay for you to do that yet. Right. Some point. Maybe That's, later. Maybe later. Maybe later. But right now, mm, maybe you need to hold off. Mm. Do you own your car? Uh, almost own my car. Uh, you're almost on your car? Oh, wait. No, no, yes, I do. You Hello. Paid, you paid it off. Yes, it is all pa- – Cherry is paid off. All yes. right. Yes. How did you decide to pick the current car you're driving? Well, it's funny. I loved my car that I had prior – I named my cars uh, – prior to Cherry. And um, when it was time to to let Lucky – Lucky was my golf. Okay. When it was time to let Lucky go <laughs> – <laughs> I was really sad. I was really sad. And what I wanted to try was something different than what I had experienced. So I wanted something bigger. You know, I wanted to be able to see more. Mm -hmm. And I wanted a car that I could bring all my friends and family in. (laughs) So I... I, so you drive a, I, a moving I, truck? <laughs> I drive I, – listen, my dream is to have an old school 70s van oh, and man. I will have that one yes, day I with a it. mural on the side just okay. so you know. But uh, I do have a SUV and um, how that came to be is I – it was the first car I saw on the lot. I just – I fell in love with just – you know, it wasn't too big. It was classy, but not too trendy. And uh, yeah, but it but it was interesting when purchasing the car because after I had a mental breakdown, like I shouldn't have this. It's too nice. I don't know. You know, it took me about a week to accept that it was okay for me to have something really nice and something that I loved and um, that was safe. Even though my other car was safe, but. I hadn't had a car in so long and I had help purchasing it whereas all my other cars previous, you know, it was all just me, you know. So that was a little bit of, of 
letting some intimacy in there. Yeah. Yeah, financially. Mm -hmm. Was practical a part of it? Sure. Yeah. Uh, I would consider myself a somewhat practical person. I get, yeah. Well, I am too, but I, that's, I get that sense that right. need to be practical. Right, right. You know, maybe these years to come, I haven't, I'm not going to be so practical, but yes, right. I think partially it was practicality. Although, you know, I drive myself the most, you know, I would like to drive more people around, but everybody's busy. See, so. you should be an Uber driver. Well, <laughs> I don't know about, uh, I, you know, like people I like. Oh, okay. <laughs> People I like and love, sure. <laughs> now, do you have a good relationship in terms of talking about money with your parents? Are you are you able to have money conversations? Like if you needed to help them out or you needed them to help you out? Is that the kind of thing that you could – You know, it's interesting. So uh, my mother is in her golden years, right? And um, and so now I have become the executive executor of her estate mm-hmm. and uh just over time when my father passed you know i've been the one to have to cl- help cl- clean up her financial uh estate her messes her, situation her situation, her situation. you may um so that has been interesting i yeah. will just say and i can see where a lot of my issues may mm-hmm. have stemmed from um and it, it it is it is uh, it is a different situation once you start to once the roles start to reverse. Right. Um, and it's interesting because growing up, you know, my parents are immigrants. They were really hardworking. My my dad at one point had three jobs that we didn't see him for years because he was just working all the time. And now I see why he was doing it because he wanted to be able to pass down, you know, assets to my sister and I. But, you know, it, it still is taking me some time to get everything nice and streamlined how I would like it. You know, it, it kind of seems never ending, really, to kind of have to clean that up. Yeah. You know, so here I am. I take care of my own finances and having to also take care of my mother's. It's 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 a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. Mm-hmm. Did you – were there any messages that either your mom or dad said about money that you have like picked up and – Go, run with it, you know, like money should be honored or whatever it is. Is there something that you went, yeah, that that resonates? Well, it only resonates because I probably heard it so many times and I don't know if it resonates in a positive way, but, <laughs> you know, you have to sacrifice, yeah. you know, yeah. you got to work really hard Always. for it. No joy. No joy. No joy. No joy. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, it was mainly about sacrifice or, yeah, about – we got to work really hard or, you know, it's just enough or maybe barely enough, Mm -hmm. you know, when come to find out they have all this money, you know, as an adult, one time I came home and I opened the garage door and I see this brand new car and I turn around and they're just laughing and they're like, we didn't want to tell you, Jennifer. I'm like, why, why would you not want to tell me? I want you guys to have Things that you've worked so hard for. I don't know where all these belief systems come from, mm-hmm. you know, that we have to suffer so hard and sacrifice. But that's obviously what they came in with, you know, yeah. I think from generations passed down. Do you think it was more cultural? Do you think any of it was from the church? Like do you know where sort of, you know, just their own family history? I'm still learning about that but just just to kind of – bring some light to it. my my parents were from opposite ends so my father's family like my grandfather was a taxi driver okay and my mother's side my grandfather was a general in the philippine army and a dentist in the philippine army my grandmother was the first nurse to one of the presidents of the philippines so, marcos not marcos but my just... uncle was his one of his first generals yes oh, okay wow mm-hmm. Yes. So um, so extreme opposites financially. My mom said that her family owned one of the first steamboats mm-hmm. in the Philippines. Mm-hmm. And that was a big deal because that was money that – that just proved that you had money back then because right. they were able to, you know, create businesses and 
work for others. So, yeah. What made your parents leave the Philippines? Like it's interesting. My father didn't want to, and my mother convinced my father hmm. to move here. And I asked her, I said, why would you move to the States if you were already wealthy in the Philippines? Because they had money there. And she said, because America is is the land of opportunity, just what you hear in the movies. That's mm. what she heard. And I thought, really? Is this, is this <laughs> the biggest opportunity that you thought? But yeah, I mean, she's happy she did it. And my mother does not like to fly in planes, so it's a miracle that she flew on a plane. Well, and she I knew ha- she wasn't getting back on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've only tricked her when she's gotten back on a plane. Like I've had to trick her. Or if I've been working you know across the country then she would fly that was mm. that's the only time she'll fly because she's paranoid to fly do you do you, were you aware growing up that your parents were immigrants like did you notice a difference between you and the other kids i did and w- i did mm-hmm. and uh i appreciate it now but growing up when you feel different mm-hmm. it you feel it, you know. Um, I had my Barbie dolls, you know. My Barbie dolls all had blonde hair, right? You know, until actually, side note, until Miss Saigon, when my dresser made me a Barbie doll that was a Kim Barbie doll, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, it looks like me!" You know, it was so exciting. But yeah, growing up, it was a challenge because I did still feel different mm-hmm. than the other kids. Uh, for example, the story that I tell is that. The first time I went to dinner with one of my best friends when I was young and we we went out, someone had ordered fish. And (laughs) the fish came in a filet and I said, what is that? And they're like, this is fish. I said, no, it's not. And they're like, it is. It's the slab that was cut off from the fish, not the whole fish like I'm used to. (laughs) Right. You have to eat the whole thing. (laughs) Right. Exactly. So I was like, it's not. I was arguing. They're like, it is. And so – I'm different that way. Or when I would look at people's lunches, you know, mine was disgusting in in comparison to a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, which I was like, (laughs) I want that, you know. Um, And also, too, I would say status-wise, I I will never forget this story. It's kind of like the pretty woman story. We had some relatives visiting from out of town, and they wanted to go to Rodeo Drive. Mm. And so two things happened. The first thing that happened was I remember going into the store and literally it was like the movie Pretty Woman. And I was a kid. The salesperson did not want to help my mom mm. because ugh, I still I still remember the feeling. You know, it, I had the feeling that they just looked down upon her or us and – I started freaking out. I was like, let's go. Let's go, mom. She's like, why? What, what's the matter? I said, I don't want to be in this store. She's like – and she was looking at a scarf or something like that. But I was just – I did not want to be there and I, it, it was really upsetting to me. Mm-hmm. Then th- later on that day, we were walking on the street and I remember I saw this little dog and I wanted to pet the dog. And I remember bending down to pet the dog and the man looked at me like – I should not come near his dog. I mean, it could have been something else. Like he, I was a kid at the time, but I was, again, I was super shy. So I wasn't attacking the dog, but it felt more like a status thing as opposed to a kid thing. But I, that could have been, but I'm a sensitive person. So right. I, I'm probably right. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, he didn't want me touching his little prissy dog. Um, yeah. So I remember those two things of uh, being different. Ethnically and also status-wise as far as where we are on the economic Mm -hmm. chain. And when all that happened, Mm -hmm. do you remember making a decision like I will come back and buy up the store or I will – like – The decision was I don't want to associate with people like that. Ah. And I'm not going to treat people like that no matter what your economic status is. Like that just felt – awful yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah and you're married now mm-hmm. to a white guy mm-hmm. <laughs> to a <laughs> white guy well, not, you know, what is not, that what is, well they're not very trendy right now not very just, and you know what and i i defend and stick up for you know the non-trendy white guy right now because not everybody fits into that box of the unpopular right now. Right. Yeah. How um, do you two discuss money? 
Uh, well, we, <laughs> if I may, <laughs> yeah, we uh, get right in there, Bob. Get right in there. Things that we shouldn't talk about: sex and money. Well, um, we've been taught how to talk about money, and mm-hmm. we have pretty consistently have done business meetings. And we probably are due for one now, but we've also gotten some outside help from some really good friends regarding, oh, cool. yeah, yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wonder really, who, yeah. I wonder who um, that is. I wonder who that is. Yeah. Um, learning how to relate to each other um, and have these business meetings and also individually um, how to deal with that. And trust me, it's still a work in progress. I mean, I would say I'm the one who won't jump in all the way mm-hmm. just because of my own things my own beliefs you know or what i've been taught and and to tell you the truth actually one person actually told me a long time ago i won't even say how many years ago but and i still haven't done it you know there is some intimacy right that comes with money and yeah. relationships yeah and i still haven't jumped in all the way so i guess i'm not being completely intimate with that but that's okay it's a work in progress something to work on it's something to work something on. to work that's on right yeah. i'm getting better that's good. After however many years of... Hey, we're all here to learn. Uh, we're all here to learn. Uh, so let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. So um, what was it... So you were on California Dreams. Yes. You would probably walk into places and people recognized you. Sure. And what was that like the first time you got recognized? It's a really interesting feeling because sometimes what happens is people will automatically be like, you're this person, right? Or it would be... Are you my daughter's soccer teacher or a soccer coach? No. Or the one. I know you. Right. Or right. when I'm at the gas station in my sweats and no makeup at seven in the morning. Hey, hey, are you? No. You know, and I'm like <laughs> running away, you know, because I'm freaked out at some, you know, guy who, you know, I But, you know, it is an interesting feeling. And for the most part, it's a good feeling because. Mm-hmm. I know that I've been able to affect someone's life in some way. Mm -hmm. I really didn't understand it at first, Uh, but it's, it's interesting. The power of television. Yeah. More so than movies, but television because you're in people's homes. Well, movies now because we have Netflix and and streaming and all, but at the time television really you're, you're right in front of their couch or right in front of their bed. And I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for that because people have written me letters and still to this day, you know, say how much the show has affected them in some way or another. Mostly good. That's and that's that's what I really want to be here doing is making an effect on people. Yeah. Making having an feel, impact. Yeah, having yeah. an impact. Yes. That's so cool. So mm-hmm. when California Dreams relaunches, <laughs> uh, would you prefer it to be on Netflix, Amazon, mm. major studio? Hmm. You know, I, I'm open and whoever is the most innovative outside the box thinker who, you know, would love to have a reboot of sorts on yeah. a show like that. I'm open to, to that. Yeah. Well, you, you have to have another concert. Oh yeah. 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 You've got to have a reboot concert yes. to get to reboot the show. Yes. Yes. So we need mm-hmm. everybody to write into the studio so we can That's get right. this show back on the air. Aww. Thanks, Bob. Yeah, that would be really fun. You know, I um, I know uh, my girlfriend Kelly would love that. I mean, we we're totally we're totally on board for that. That's cool. And I know it's, some of our other castmates would love that too. It's gonna happen. Yeah. It's gonna happen. Yeah. We're yeah. getting close to the time, so let me ask you a one last question. Sure. What is a money tip that you currently utilize, like to save money, or like what's a what's an amazing tip that you you use today? Um, the tip that I would say that I use today still to this day is pay yourself first. Um, for me, I've been freelance all my life, so I still practice that. Cool. So whether that, you know, whether it be big or small, you know, depending on who you are, you know, everybody's financial situation is different, but pay yourself first. Um, and I would say to, you know, if you don't know what to do with your money or, or if you, are still vacillating on what would be good for you. I would, you know, invest in talking with someone about what would be the best financial plan for you, you know, because I think, again, 
money can be such a taboo subject. Yeah. I mean, you had me squirming a little bit here and there. But you know what I mean? But <laughs> yeah. if we were more open about that, yeah. we would be so much better off taking care of ourselves and thus, you know, and that would help our economy too. Yeah. You know, and we wouldn't be in so much fear around the money, you yeah. know, in this day and age just because, you know, I can feel – Everything around us, it's like scrambling to to attain or, you know, get stuff. And I do believe that it's all there for us. You know, it's just are we open to it and uh, and can it flow our way? Absolutely. You know? Well, I think it can. Yeah, it I will flow so. your way and yeah. our way. So I'm yeah. ready. Where can people find you now? They can find me on social media. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm on Instagram, Jenny underscore Kwan, J-E-N-N-I-E underscore K-W-A-N, and on Facebook. Cool. Yeah. Check her out, and yeah. let's get her rebooted Aww. with California Dreams. Thanks, well, we are almost out of time, so don't forget to share the laughs. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Search for Money You Should Ask, all one word. And you can subscribe to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Stitcher. If you love this show, tell everybody. If you didn't, keep your mouth shut. Until next time. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. Thank you.